everyone and welcome back to Elizabeth Hogarth Designs. Today we're going to be taking a look at the essential craft papers from Craft Consortium. There is a huge library of beautiful papers um, but I'm going to be focusing on the ink drops range. So if we specifically look at the ink drops range you've got marbled effect papers so this is your dusk collection. Um, I've had these papers for quite a while and I use them all the time. And the purpose of the video today is to show you that you can use them for more than just background papers. So we've got Earth, which has got a fabulous range of greens, which I like using for um, leaves and making sort of boxes and... It's, as you can see, you've got different designs on the back and the front. This is another firm favourite because I love the vibrancy of the colours. These are your vivids. And if I quickly flick back and forth, you won't see all 40 designs. I mean, look, you've got gold shots through the colours. So sometimes it looks like it's inked dropped onto paper and other times you've got lines like a marbled effect this is another lovely i just love the way that the colors come together but equally i love this page equally you can see that within each range each page coordinates with the rest this is a lovely blend of candy this one here is called candy this is a more recent collection and i've enjoyed making cards with this because if you're not very good at making your own backgrounds this is a brilliant starting point and because the color wheel is combined within each set of pages you can also work out what colors can go together but i'll show you a little bit more of that later on in the video this is the new paper set called Ocean, Ink Drops Ocean. It's absolutely sublime. I haven't got a complete pad, but I'm absolutely in love with it. I haven't made any projects with it yet because I think it's going to be a case of I need to buy another pad first before I'm willing to break into these papers. I absolutely adore this one. It's like they've dropped ink onto oil and then they've layered gold splatters on top. This one is like the centre of the earth or oceans or looking at earth from up above with this gold coming through. I know it's bizarre to talk about paper in this way, but if you enjoy paper as much as I do, you'll completely be bowled over by this range I mean they're just glorious so this one's got really deep dark blue and navy in it I don't know how they manage to combine the grey and the silver and the gold but for me it works so without further ado let's have a look at some things that I've been making I won't necessarily show you lots of um, techniques today but if there's anything in particular you would like to know then by all means do leave a comment below and I'll do my best to come back to you. Okay, so let's begin with the Vivid range. So all I've done here is taken one of the sets of papers and used it to create the background. I've then stamped upon it with some stamps from... That's crafty, I believe these are. I'll double-check the details and leave them for you below. But all it takes is using the colours that you find in the papers to allow you to focus on your stamping this one here the papers have been coordinated with the stamps itself so this is um clear inks that i've stamped with but i've also paper pieced the leaves and these little folds here you can also use the papers for die cutting your backgrounds this is another example of using the colours from the papers 
to stamp onto and then this forms the colour of your design. So all I've done here is stamped with black ink, added my own sparkles and coloured in the stems with pencils but the papers and these are the vivid papers again are Bring in the colour to the card so you're not having to make your own decisions about colour blending. Here's another version where, again, I've used the background papers as my matte and layers. So I've die cut into the papers. So you've got one, two, three backgrounds here that all coordinate perfectly together. But then I've used the same colour family to stamp onto cut the stamps out and then add them and i think you get a really nice color tone for your cards the next card comes from the ink drops candy because i wanted to play with the pale pinks and the pale blues that come near the back of the pad so this card here i've again used the technique of uh, die cutting my mats and layers from the coordinating cardstock. I've also inked on it. Let me show you. It just goes to show you can die cut, you can ink, you can emboss, you can add glitter. And so this is a very simple card, but I think it works. The next couple of cards come from Ink Drops Earth, and I have also coordinated it with the candy but you've got much more green tones in here i've used this paper pad a lot but on this one here i've used some funky fossil stamps and again i've used this is where the candy comes in so i stamped onto here with a pink versifying claire i've used two different layers let me bring it up it looks really really easy but what i've actually done is i've uh created a background from one colour tone and then I flipped over the paper and I added an extra layer, this lattice layer, in another colour tone and then I moved back to the ink drops um, candy paper to coordinate the stamp and the sentiment so you can move across all of the different paper pads the next two cards are much bolder and brighter than I would normally use but that is the fun of playing with different colours of papers. But on this one here I've stamped again so you can see that stamping is brilliant on these papers. I've also coloured with um, watercolour pens and pencils and the papers take them brilliantly. The papers are 180 GSM cardstock, so as you can see, it takes colour really, really well. So you can use pencils, you can use watercolour paints, you can use uh, pens. I haven't tried acrylic paint on it, but I'm sure it won't be a problem. I've used sparkle pens, I can die cut with them, I can stamp with them. Um, and on my next card here, I'll show you that you can also emboss on them. If you follow my channel, you'll know that this isn't really my usual style, but I liked playing with the different colours. So this here is where I have embossed the paper. And again, I've used the, the mix of the green and the other pinks and the blues to form... It's almost like topiary hedges, so it can become whatever you want it to. And then again, you've gone back to using the paper to die cut your backgrounds and your frames and even to stamp your sentiments onto. I move back to the Ink Drops Vivid for this set of tags that I'm going to show you in a minute. And my idea behind this is that I wanted to take these really bold colours and then add black to them. So I thought I would try some stenciling and I have literally worked a stencil onto the colour so that it's almost like an illusion that you think you're working with black whereas really what you've done is you've worked with the colour and then you've pulled it back with the use of the black ink. I've also added some die cut flowers and again these are using the coloured paper and then mounted onto black 
just to pull a design together. But I think that makes a really unique set of tags. The final project is made with the dusk papers and I like the subtle tones in here, particularly these browns and golds at the front of the paper pad. I had a request from Catherine Anderson on how to make these small tag books. I used to make this style when I was a teaching assistant and you can see the original idea further down on my channel, but I'll leave you the link. But what you're doing is you're folding one twelve by 12 paper to make the pages themselves. And then you use another 12 by 12 paper to make the pockets. I'm going to use the Vivid papers. So I've got a couple of sheets of the same colours. And all we're going to do is we're going to score a centre line. I'm working in centimetres, so the um, paper is just a little bit longer than 30 centimetres. So what you'll end up doing is trimming off this excess here. But we're going to score down the middle at 15 centimetres. And then we're going to turn our paper over and with the fold line down the centre here we're then going to score at 15 centimetres again and then halfway is seven and a half centimetres and halfway between 15 and 30 is 22 and a half centimetres Okay, so now you're going to fold your score lines. Remember to turn over so that you're folding on the mountains. I would use a cutting knife for this, but for the purpose of the video, let's use the big scissors to cut down the first three panels up to the final panel like so and then it's a matter of folding back and forth to create your pages and then when you get to this final one here flip it over and then fold back and forth again Furnish your score lines. And then you've got your wallet. Now if you want to, you can glue these two pages together. You can glue these two pages together. It depends upon the thickness that you want. But because I'm going to be adding extra pockets, then I'm going to leave this as it is. A nice little touch is to round off the corners of your pages. To make the inside pockets for your album, take four 14 centimetre squares, fold them in half. You want to neaten off the corners with your punch and then you're going to fold back the top right corner or the top left corner to reveal the back of the paper. You can then use glue to seal the bottom to create the pocket and then these can then be stuck inside the wallet. have two more little wallets. My Belle Fleur sample had a belly band 
round the middle here but you can close the wallet up however you like and I'll mention once again if you want to know how to make a folder to go with the style of um, mini portfolios then take a look at my video which is further down my channel one more thing to mention is that as part of the essential craft papers range you've also got a wealth of other designs so this is another recent release which is the patina we then have the bright blooms which is mixing the flowers and the polka dots We've got a Bloom and Wild, which I've mostly used. Then we have Festive Flora, which is really, really traditional Christmas. I love these papers. I find these ones quite hard to cut into. We've got the Grunge Tones. And again, these are fantastic for making envelopes and boxes to go with the cards that I've already shown you. What I'll do is I'll leave you some extra photos at the end of this talky bit and you can see many more projects that I've made with these beautiful papers. So they're Nasia Metal Textures. This is fantastic for men's cards, male type projects, just your mixed media. Brilliant, brilliant designs. I love this page. It's just so classy, isn't it? Really classy and really craftable. Love these colours too. And then one last one that I have is the Vintage Emporium. So you've got old-fashioned papers and maps, romantic cards, old newspapers, exercise book paper, photos. Really, really craftable. So there we have the ink drops range from craft consortium i think that you'll agree that these papers are really really versatile you can glitter you can cut you can ink you can stamp you can heat emboss these ones here have been heat embossed you can add watercolors you can add paint and water you can emboss using your embossing folders you can create inky backgrounds, uh, really delicate colours to really vibrant colours. You want to try these types of things so that you can paper piece, you can die cut and paper piece. You can use backgrounds and add glitter. You can add washi tape to coordinate everything together. You can make little books. You can make tags, you can stencil with it. There really is so much that you can do with these papers because they're such high quality and the colours are superb as well. I think you probably spotted that I've used much more bolder colours than you're used to seeing me do, but I like creating with new things and trying new styles because that's how I develop as a crafter and I hope you will too. Thank you for joining me. I know it, some of these videos take a little time to watch, but I appreciate you sticking out to the end. I will leave you photos of some of these projects, plus some of the other cards and boxes that I've made with these papers. If you have enjoyed this video today, please do think about subscribing to my channel and liking the video so that you can be notified of when my new projects come along. I look forward to seeing you back here again soon. Take care. Bye-bye for now.